So, for the 2x2 two two case, getting the inverse actually follows a nice pattern. Again, 2x2 two two matrices tend to be relatively nice for multiplication. And in fact, if we need the inverse of some matrix A, B, C, D, we will have that it takes the form 1 over A, D minus B, C times the matrix D, negative B, negative C, A. Where, for example, if we use this formula to find the inverse of 3, 1, 4, 2, in that case, we will end up having that for this matrix, A is equal to 3, B is equal to 1, C is equal to 4, and D is equal to 2. So, if we take that, we can plug those pieces into our formula over there, like so. And then from there, it's just a scalar multiplication into a matrix, which will leave us with 1, negative 1 half, negative 2, 3 halves. And I'll leave it to you guys to verify that in this case, A, A inverse, and A inverse, A actually will return the identity. But hopefully, as you get comfortable working with these, you'll kind of be able to see that it's going to work the way you're, that it's supposed to. And I'll say that, again, for this section, we're going to generally stick to cases where this does work, that is, where an inverse does exist, but understand that singular matrices are a thing. We're just not focusing on them right now, because the purpose is for you guys to see how to get an inverse, and to see how an inverse works, and that doesn't quite function if the inverse doesn't exist.